congratulations, College of Engineering graduates. As the Dean of the College of Engineering, it is my pleasure to welcome you here today. I will begin by introducing our platform officials. Barbara Wilson, University of Iowa president, keynote speaker and distinguished engineering alumni, inductee Caroline Van Ingen Dunn, Joseph Reinhardt, professor and chair of biomedical engineering, Alan Guyman, professor and chair of chemical and biochemical engineering, Alan Bradley, professor and chair of civil and environmental engineering, Gary Christensen, professor of electrical and computer engineering, Geb Thomas, professor and chair of industrial and systems engineering, Qinglong Lin, professor and chair of mechanical engineering, Alexandra Humston, student speaker, industrial engineering, Jane Dorman, director of admissions and student life, and the marshal who led in the graduates into the auditorium, Professor Nicole Grosslin, Associate Dean for Academic Programs. Please be seated. I'm so excited to be here with you today at my first in-person College of Engineering commencement ceremony. The academic journey that has brought you here today has certainly been a long one. We all know that engineering education is both rigorous and challenging, as well as deeply rewarding and life-changing. That you endured one of the most difficult majors on campus and during a pandemic testifies to your resilience as students, as engineers, and as Hawkeyes. I want to congratulate each one of you on this tremendous achievement. It's no understatement to say that this College of Engineering produces graduates who will change the world. Our alumni have produced innovations which have improved the quality of life through medical technologies for enhanced disease prevention, detection, and treatment. Our alumni work to make data more secure, information more accessible, and travel safer. Our alumni develop environmental breakthroughs that have provided cleaner drinking water, easier identification of contaminants, and flood mitigation. You can now count yourself among this prestigious group of alumni who are enhancing communities here in Iowa, across the country, and around the world. To the friends and family members gathered here today, I want to thank you for supporting these students as they navigated their college careers. Many of you welcomed them back home at the height of the pandemic and ensured that they could continue to learn, create, and thrive. Those that stayed on campus needed other kinds of support as social distancing led to fewer opportunities for in-person labs and gatherings in the Seaman Center. Through all of this, you helped these students get through an unprecedented time and positioned them for the success we are celebrating today. Thank you for all that you have done. To the class of 2021, you should be proud of the work that has brought you here today. This, however, is only the beginning of your journey. Whether you're going on to graduate or professional school, taking a position in industry, or joining a government or nonprofit agency, I am confident that you will go on to have an impact far beyond this campus. Your technical training has been complemented with guided studies on ethics and social justice. 
You are globally aware and collaborative engineers who can now call yourselves alumni of the College of Engineering. No matter where life takes you, remember this. You will always be Hawkeyes, and we will always welcome you back to campus. Congratulations, and go Hawks. I would now like to introduce today's student speaker, Alexandra Humston, is an industrial and systems engineering major from Wellman, Iowa. She is a first generation college graduate and has worked as a teaching assistant for ergonomics, engineering economy, and stochastic modeling. She has led the University of Iowa's water ski and wakeboard team as president as well as completed a co-op at Civco Medical Solutions and an internship at Tenneco. She spent a summer volunteering through the AmeriCorps VISTA program, which focuses on the fight against poverty. After graduation, Alexandra will pursue a Master of Science degree in Systems and Engineering Management at Texas Tech University. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I would like to give a warm welcome to all of our friends and families who could be here today and also offer a message of gratitude on behalf of the graduating class to all of the faculty and staff who have supported us throughout the years. Thank you. Before starting college here at the University of Iowa, my idea of what it should look like honestly really came from things like books and movies. So my expectations did include a lot of vague, cliche things like new experiences, new friends, hard classes, long nights, and then from what I learned from my high school teachers as things we would never get away with in college. I, like most of us, had many of these expectations met during my first year here. Together, we spent long nights in the Siemens Center, in the libraries and in our dorm rooms. Principles of chemistry definitely met my expectation of a hard college class, and I personally met a great group of friends in the water ski club. Along with my expectations of college in general, I did have a few expectations of what being an engineering student would look like. I, of course, expected it to be difficult, but I also worried I would feel alienated as a woman in a male-dominated program. But as the semesters continued, my expectations changed some. I realized that there are a lot of great women in engineering, and that my negative expectations of these courses can negatively impact my experience of them. Through my new understanding, I began to feel more comfortable in my courses, and I was able to enjoy as much as I could learning about physics, ergonomics, and circuits. But of course, things always change, and along with them, our expectations do as well. I took a co-op during the summer and fall of 2019, which means I came back after eight months off from classes in the spring of 2020. We all know what the spring of 2020 means. Um, I had just realigned my expectations for myself and what my semester would look like when we were all sent home for online classes. We all had schedules that were almost non-existent with asynchronous classes, and the only expectation for myself was to roll to the side of the bed I kept my laptop on to watch our class videos. Then coming back in person this semester was just yet another adjustment we all had to make. Now after all of this, we are finally here facing more changes, but only with a degree in hand. I know we each have surmounted obstacles and have excelled while experiencing changes in our way of learning from in-person to virtual and then in-person yet again, changes in ourselves as we learned and grew as individuals, and also many changes in the world around us. During this time of challenges and change, I hope each of us has exceeded our own expectations in some way. May it have been seeking a new experience you never thought you would, achieving better grades than you thought possible, receiving an internship you only dreamed of, or maybe you just exceeded your own expectations by actually getting out of bed to attend our virtual classes. Looking at the challenges and changes that will come next, we may all feel similar to when we first started pursuing our degree here and only had a few expectations to get us through. But because we are now equipped with the knowledge and confidence we have accumulated here at Iowa, I hope we all have raised the bar in what we expect of ourselves. 
We are no longer the timid first year students afraid to speak in front of professors, lecture halls of students, or company representatives at the career fair. We now have the experience and confidence to make our voices heard and the knowledge to make people want to listen. We should expect to use our voice, our knowledge, and all of the skills we have gained over the years and achieve greatness. But more than that, it is important to also hold ourselves to the expectation to be honest and ambitious. We should be understanding and nothing less than kind. No matter what our next phase is, working in industry, continuing education, or starting a new business or phase unique to you, we are each capable of solving problems and making improvements that make a lasting difference. We should expect nothing less than to do work that improves our towns, communities, and maybe even the world. Yes, I hope we can all achieve these expectations and more. But I do have one last expectation to leave you all with that I know we can achieve. Expect to be a Hawkeye for life. Go Hawks. Thank you, Alexander, for those excellent thoughts on your experiences at Iowa. Dear colleagues, it is now our duty and privilege to induct alumna Caroline Van Ingen Dunn into the University of Iowa College of Engineering Distinguished Engineering Alumni Academy. This is an important occasion for both the new member and the academy. The Distinguished Engineering Alumni Academy was created to honor University of Iowa engineering alumni for their personal contribution toward engineering achievement, leadership, and service to the profession and to society. Caroline Van Ingen Dunn has excelled in each of these regards. Caroline is director of the Center for Broadening Participation in STEM at Arizona State University where she is leading the center's effort to foster inclusive STEM environments for students who use the community college system and to provide access along their academic pathway. She is the principal investigator of National Science Foundation grants in partnership with rural community colleges and Hispanic serving institutions focusing on serving underrepresented students in STEM. Her work builds a national network of educators and partners who collaborate and use culturally responsive experiential learning to increase Latinx student STEM success. Ms. Van Ingen Dunn has a Master of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Stanford University and a Bachelor of Science Engineering degree in Biomedical Engineering from the University of Iowa. She serves on the College of Engineering Advisory Board and on the YWCA Metropolitan Phoenix Board of Directors, supporting its mission to eliminate racism and empower women. She serves on several workforce development and diversity, equity, and inclusion committees. I would like now to ask Caroline to join me at the podium to receive the Certificate of Membership in the Distinguished Engineering Alumni Academy. I now present to you Caroline Van Ingen Dunn, newly inducted member of the College of Engineering's Distinguished Engineering Alumni Academy, who will now issue the charge to the graduates. Hello, <clears throat> hello. Uh, Dean Nemhard, Iowa faculty, staff, my fellow alumni, thank you for this award and for the kind invitation to speak to this wonderful group of Iowa graduates sitting on the stage. Welcome, congratulations. And to you, the families and friends who are here in their honor and to celebrate their accomplishment. I'm also here to celebrate with you, to affirm your success 
in earning an engineering degree and to send you off on, a life, on your life journey with a few guiding principles that I hope you'll remember. So pay attention. You're all engineering graduates from Iowa, and yet each of you is unique, uniquely destined on a path that is still unknown. And you're guided by the education and skills that you have developed here. Whether you're continuing on to graduate school, seeking a job, or you already have a job, I share my guiding tip number one. This is your journey, this is your path, and it is yours and only yours. There's, only, there's no one way to live it, and there's no need to have it figured out yet. Let your life unfold. This is important to know, because unlike your previous years that have been defined by grades and grade levels, the socially expected norms will be fewer and far between. There are no more roadmaps, and unless you're going to graduate school, there are no more weekly assignments or due dates, no grades to measure your progress or your self-worth. You'll miss these short-term markers that provide immediate gratification of knowing where you stand. Students who are going on to graduate school, you can enjoy these frequent checkpoints a little while longer. Students going on to a job, well, annual rev reviews will be a common milestone to gauge your progress at work. Your raises will, measure, will be a measure of, of your success, occurring annually at the most, which is a long time when you're used to receiving more immediate feedback. Just as you did when you first started here at Iowa, you will adjust. And through diligent work, asking questions, contributing your ideas, you'll make your journey your own. Believe me, I remember. While pursuing my biomedical engineering degree, I worked at the Iowa Hospital's orthopedic research lab, where I studied the theoretical response of a hip implant using finite elements, and I learned how to use an Instron machine to, ex to assess the strength of attachment mechanisms on cadaver hip bones. My interest in designing hip implants and knee replacements was the motivation I needed to get through the biomedical engineering program. And with encouragement from my professor that I continue on to graduate school, he connected me to his network of colleagues who were doing similar research. As a result, I was offered a research assistantship at the University of Vermont. And no sooner had I agreed to go there than I received a similar offer from Stanford University. My decision to go to Stanford did not come lightly, and it didn't come quickly. It was one of the first most critical decisions I had to make without a roadmap. I had just accepted a research assistant at the assistantship with the University of Vermont. I, what was I to do? I remember deliberating painfully over this quandary, doing my due diligence, asking questions, before eventually deciding to change direction to go to Stanford. I share this anecdote with you because it points to guiding tip number two. Whatever decision you make along your journey, it will be the right decision. I will never know exactly how my life would have turned out if I'd gone to Vermont um, to get my master's degree there, but I am sure it would have been an equally good one. Ironically, my first job out of graduate school was with a company in Phoenix, Arizona that had nothing to do with orthopedics, but instead was involved in research and development of crashworthy helicopter seats. These were originally tested at the University of Vermont. I actually saw these seats in the drop tower when I was visiting Vermont. And that's what happened. I moved to Phoenix after I was offered a job by a small company of 62 people whose human resources manager contacted me out of the blue on a recommendation from her best friend in high school, who happened to be one of my good biomedical engineering friends. Guiding tip number three. Hang on to your engineering friends and faculty as you never know when you'll be able to help each other. I didn't even explore those jobs in Warsaw, Indiana, where all the orthopedic companies are located. I was attracted to the small company because many people there were young and single like I was. And to this day, many are still very good friends of my husband's and mine. Guiding tip number four. With an engineering degree, the world is your oyster. You can take on a range of opportunities that life has to offer. You can do anything. A professor once told me that an engineering degree is a new liberal arts degree, and I think she was right. There's not a job or industry these days that doesn't require some set of technical skills or engineering thinking. And to top it off, here you are, you're graduating from Iowa with engineering and more. 
right? We are really proud of this slogan and the reality it represents. Because did you know that Iowa is just one of the 11 universities in the country that has all five health science colleges, medical, dental, pharmacy, nursing, public health? It has a law school, a business school, music drama, and the Iowa Writers' Workshop. Multiple resources and people to help diversify your experiences or hone your engineering skills and do more. It's fantastic. You'll be entering your graduate program or starting your post-college career with a strong foundation on how to apply your engineering skills. When I first started working, I volunteered in classrooms and gave engineering demonstrations on safety, such as taping an egg to a little cart and rolling it down a sled until it hit a barrier and comparing the outcome of that taped egg to an egg that wasn't strapped into a little cart. It was a great way to encourage students to wear their seat belts and to become engineers. This volunteer work also helped me adjust my career path. Instead of leaving my full-time engineering position and with the support of my boss, I negotiated a contract to continue working part-time and started my consulting company to work on STEM education projects that developed out of my volunteer work. For 10 years as a consultant, I balanced the full load of engineering and STEM education projects while raising our two children. And eventually, I joined a nonprofit organization to start a STEM center. This led me to my current position at Arizona State University as a director for the Center for Broadening Participation in STEM. I built this center to give community college faculty and staff the resources and training needed to effectively recruit and, ret and retain students, especially underrepresented students into STEM programs. With the steady growth of the Hispanic population and the marginalization of the black population in these areas, there's a dire need to do all we can to diversify our STEM education programs and, in, and careers, especially in engineering. So how I got here to do this work isn't a fluke. It was my path. It developed one step at a time. It was my journey. I walked through doors that opened for me it wasn't planned out. A plan might have been helpful. So here's guiding tip number five. It's the last one. Take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Open doors, walk through them. You never know what one little yes will lead to. So the example that I'm going to share about this one little yes started over coffee with the Iowa Dean of Engineering who asked me if I would serve on the Iowa Engineering Board. I hesitated to say yes until I remembered, this is my journey. With no family remaining in Iowa, I flew to Des Moines and drove to Iowa City, wondering what in the heck was I doing back in Iowa? Well, that was nearly 20 years ago. One little yes rekindled my friendship with my freshman year roommate, who I would stay with. It renewed my high school friendships, I grew up in Muscatine, a high school in Muscatine. And dare I say, it connected me to Iowa football. <laughs> and most unexpectedly, when my son, who was born and raised in Arizona, and who vowed he would go to the University of Arizona where my husband went to school, well, he reluctantly, reluctantly came with me for a tour of Iowa while I was at an advisory board meeting. He didn't say much after that visit. And it wasn't until he had toured several other universities that he decided on Iowa. I was floored. It is through his eyes, eyes like yours, that are wide open, eager to, con to continue to learn, to grow, to explore, to live, to love, that I myself have really come to love and appreciate this university and all it has to offer. Our son found his wife here at Iowa. They were married just this June at the IMU, lived together in Chicago. I'd say my world truly opened up, and I could say his did too, after just one little yes. So you're off to an equally great start with a great education from a renowned university. It has an excellent engineering program and more and you have a degree that will carry you through the rest of your life. Enjoy the ride, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you.
Thank you, Caroline, for those wonderful remarks, and congratulations again on your induction into the college's Distinguished Engineering Alumni Academy. President Barbara Wilson will now confer the Bachelor of Science in Engineering degrees on our graduating students. Will the candidates for the degree, Bachelor of Science in Engineering, please rise. President Wilson, these candidates, having completed all the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Engineering, are recommended to you by the faculty of the College of Engineering for the conferring of this degree. On recommendation of the faculty of the College of Engineering, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, I confer on each of you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Engineering as qualified and designated. We now wish to individually recognize the recipients of Engineering Baccalaureate degrees. Jane Dorman will introduce each degree candidate individually. Jane is the College of Engineering's Director of Admissions and Student Life. She met most of the students when they joined the college and has mentored many of them through the years. Therefore, it is particularly fitting that she will introduce them as they receive their degrees here at commencement. we go. The most important things I have to say are on their name cards anyway. Will the candidates for degree biomedical engineering please rise? Professor and Department Executive Officer Joseph Reinhardt will represent the biomedical engineering program. Matthew Culver with University Honors with Highest Distinction. Congratulations. Joseph Gondwe. Congratulations. Noelle Teresa Green. Jonah Heberlein with University Honors, Minors in Mathematics and Computer Science. Lydia Sibylla Luton. Molly J. Mead. Kurt Henry Moser. Justin P. Scott. Ashwini Shiva Prasad. Uchala Thipaswami. Congratulations. 
Bryce Timmons. Kristen Josephine Zeski. We will now recognize the candidates for degrees in chemical engineering. Professor and Department Executive Officer Alan Guyman will represent the chemical engineering program. Jack Douglas Domek with a certificate in sustainability. Evan Edward McCormick. Matthew Randall Meeker with a minor in chemistry. We will now recognize the candidates for degrees in civil engineering. Professor and Department Executive Officer Alan Bradley will represent the civil engineering program. Congratulations. Monayam Adam. Congratulations. John Dito Menico. Austin Daniel Duffy with a minor in mathematics. Grace Ann Gudenkoff. Kyle Jenkins. Alex Zarasek with minors in geographical information science and in music. Duncan Spera. Daniel Christian Zertzman. We will now recognize the candidates for degrees in environmental engineering, and Dr. Bradley will continue to award these degrees. Congratulations. Christian J. Arnett with a minor in military science. Congratulations. Madeline Murphy. We will now recognize the candidates for degrees in computer science and engineering and electrical engineering. Professor Gary Christensen will represent both programs. We will begin with computer science and engineering. Evan Bradley with a minor in Spanish. Joseph Alexander Chapsky. Nathan Cox. Henry James De Luca. Noah Douglas. Claudio Mema. Andrew Stephen Murley. Suchita Patel. 
<laughs> Nick Palafis. This next graduate is actually achieving both degrees, computer science and engineering and electrical engineering, Joseph Richard Betcher with a minor in math. And now we'll continue with the electrical engineering graduates. Noah Brown with a minor in mathematics. Grayson William Davis with distinction. Congratulations. Dauda Keita. Congratulations. Matthew James Clouse. Tessa Schmitz, with minors in mathematics, computer science, and with university honors. Congratulations. Dovine Sowu. We will now recognize the candidates for degrees in industrial engineering. Professor and Department Executive Officer Geb Thomas will represent the industrial engineering program. Patrick Jude Michael with a minor in business administration. Congratulations. Brendan Noonan with a minor in business administration. Sophie, I'm hugging you. Sophia Schultz with a minor in business administration. Congratulations. Alexandra Lee Humston with a minor in psychology, a certificate in sustainability and highest distinction. And lastly, we will recognize the candidates for degrees in mechanical engineering. Professor and Department Executive Officer Ching Long Lin will represent the Mechanical Engineering Program. Austin Kibler. Trenton Charles Verhacheski. Christopher McMichael. Congratulations. Dan Shin. Congratulations. Samuel Thomas Berry with minors in mathematics, computer science, and military science. Caleb Brace. Luan Trun. Jesse Bolander with minors in mathematics and business administration. Congratulations. Parker Lewis Ford. Congratulations. Thank you. Way to go, Parker. <laughs> Lewis Andrew Lenz the Fifth with a minor in mathematics. <laughs> Giovanni Adomas. Adam Stephen Rose. Congratulations. 
Kyle Martin Scales. Damian Roy Johnson. Lauren Hayashi Testa. Please join me in congratulating everyone for their hard work and accomplishments. I don't know. It seems, it seems like just a minute or two ago that I met all of you as you began this adventure we call Engineering at Iowa. I know I speak for others in the college when I say that we have immensely enjoyed the opportunity to spend these years with this wonderful group of people. I wish you all the best. You will always be part of our engineering family. Keep in touch. And now, graduates, please turn your tassels to the left side of your caps. You are now officially alumni of the College of Engineering. And finally, I want to say that as engineers, you are equipped to make essential contributions to this nation and this world. You have a responsibility to bring your talents, understanding, and expertise to bear on the problems facing the world. I hope you'll be guided by the highest of ethical standards with great respect for our environment and a genuine commitment to human values. We wish you the greatest of success in your career and your future.